Howdy folks, this is Father Dougal 9000 here, and welcome to another episode of Game Finish Trios, a series where I talk about the games I've played and beaten as part of the Hardcore Gaming 101 Forums Game Finish Challenge. And also, welcome to the first video where we're looking at games that I played back in 2022. It's crazy to think that I'd been doing these write-ups for over a year at the time, and although I hadn't planned on it then, I think I ended up uh, covering just as many games as I did in 2021. I particularly ended up getting into adventure gaming in a way I previously hadn't done, though it'll be a while before we get to that portion of the year, but hey, it's something to look forward to. You know, like birthday parties, the release of your favorite musician's latest album, or uh, some other third cool thing, I don't know, whatever floats your boat. Uh, you decide what the third cool thing is. It's like a choose your own adventure book, but a video. Yeah. Today's games were originally logged from the 7th to the 15th of January, 2022. A hundred and two Dalmatians. Puppies to the rescue! For the PlayStation. Around the time that I played this, I had just gotten a laptop. Uh, it was mainly so I could actually use it for college work, because we were still using those social distance and communication services like MS Teams and Zoom, because my tablet that I've been using was old and not up to snuff, and I figured I may as well just get a laptop and maybe I can use that for other things. And among those other things, I wanted to see how it could run PlayStation games. So I downloaded Duck Station and grabbed a couple of small sized games, including this, to give it a whirl. It's a fairly straightforward 3D platformer that reminded me a bit of Spyro. At least insofar as your character has a medium ranged attack and a roll that moves you around faster while also working as an attack in its own right. I was rather amused at how it was based on the live-action films being made at the time, but it takes its art style from the original animated movie. So you get this kind of weird hybrid where the dogs look like Pongo and Perdita, but they don't have those names and there's a parrot everywhere that gives you tutorials. I faintly remember there being a parrot in the live-action film, if my memory of seeing a bit of it at the age of five is vaguely correct. Uh, I don't have all that much to say about this one. It's a decent, but mostly unremarkable kind of game. Otherwise, it's grand if you're in the mood for a 3D platformer. That level out in the countryside with the Stonehenge area, that looks really nice. It's got really lovely skies and everything. And, and, it is a game where Frankie Muniz voices a dog. And you cannot say that about most video games, so it's worth existing even just for that. Skatebird for the Nintendo Switch. I had never heard about this game, at least until I read about it in that Destructor article by Jonathan Holmes talking about his favorite games of 2021. And I was intrigued enough by what he said about this that I gave it a whirl. It's basically a Tony Hawk's Pro Skater game, right down to reusing the button layout and featuring the mission structure from Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 4 where you talk to characters and perform tasks. The main differences are that you play as a bird, going round on a tiny little skateboard, and you can customize the bird to your heart's delight, though sadly and weirdly you can't be a crow. All your goals are in the name of helping out your owner, also known as Big Friend, as they work a miserable job at the office, and moving around is, as the bird is quite clumsy and awkward. That last point is the main thing that makes a lot of reviews for the game so middling, and it can still frustrate even hours into the thing when you're trying to get to a certain spot or pull off tricks. It's quite a bit of a pain. 
That said, there are plenty of settings that you can change so that the game is comfortably awkward, such as how tight your turns are, the strength of balance meters, or you could just turn them off if you fancy. There's a reset button that takes you back to a certain location that you can use freely between missions if you're trying to nail a tough gap. And you can even get rid of the in-mission time limits if that's adding too much pressure. I think there's something to be said for having clunky controls or a bit of a wonky game feel, because they can make the experience more memorable or unique. Honestly, I think that the goal structure of just do one thing at a time works better here than in Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 4, since actually pulling off the one thing that you're asked to do really feels like an achievement, whereas in Pro Skater 4 it felt quite restrictive considering what you're capable of doing and what you'd been doing in the earlier Pro Skater games. I do wish that there were more stages, or at least a greater variety of level themes rather than apartment and grey office, but that theming is in service of a surprisingly involved narrative that you get from the mission blurbs before and after the mission, so I can't really complain. As is, it's a neat Tony Hawk kind of game that's endearingly clumsy, and it's got a banging soundtrack to boot with plenty of rad licensed tunes and memorably weird original songs. I definitely recommend it. East 5 Lost Kefin Kingdom of Sand for the Super Nintendo Entertainment System SNES. Yes, East 5. Late last year, I ended up grabbing a bunch of translations for various Japan-only action-adventure games on the Super Nintendo, including this and East 4, Mask of the Sun. I've always wanted to try and get into East, as it's an intentionally simple action RPG series that sounds quite up my alley, but I've not had the best of luck with it. I did beat East Chronicles 1 on the PC back in 2019, but I couldn't play East Chronicles 2 because the save system was busted. I don't know why, it was just acting weird for no reason. I found East 3 on the Mega Drive to be way too intense going into it. I think I'm just not used to that kind of immediately difficult from the off and you gotta grind loads kind of game. And the first boss battle of Mask of the Sun was way too tough. I might try the PC Engine CD versions of those games down the line and see if that fares any better, but I'm happy to say that with East 5, it worked. I had a pretty good time with it. Yes. I'm aware that East 5 is generally the most obscure game in the series. It's the only title to not have a localized version, whether that's just a straightforward official translation like most games uh, from 6 onwards get, or in the form of a remake like what happened with uh, 3 and 4. I'm also aware that 5 isn't as highly regarded, mainly due to being perceived as a fairly generic Super Nintendo action RPG. It's probably because I haven't played many games from that genre at that specific time, but I thought that East 5 was quite enjoyable. It's an easy enough game, where you carry plenty of potions, combat's very straightforward, and dungeons are quite simple, and those are the things that I really like about it, since I can just boot the thing up and go on some adventures for a while without tough puzzles or overwhelming boss fights getting in the way. In a weird way, playing it reminded me a bunch of the Japan-only action RPG Brightus. That came out for the PlayStation, I covered it for Hardcore Gaming 101. I'm weirdly fond of it. Both games have a protagonist that can jump and slash enemies, and for some reason that is enough of a connection. Hell, part of me wants to go back to Brightus every now and again, but I stop because I know I'll eventually come up against that uh, final dungeon, which I couldn't navigate because it's literally the darkest thing in the universe. Uh, so, at the very least, East 5 scratched that itch, something fierce, and I really, really appreciated that. So, yeah, East 5 kind of rules.
And with that, we've wrapped up another episode of the series. I hope that you enjoyed watching, and that you'll tune in for the next video. Thank you so much, and until we meet again, have a wonderful day!